All right, story number five, story number five. Big shout out to Terrace Martin, man. Terrace Martin is an incredible jazz musician. Uh, he's collaborated with artists all across the musical divide. Uh, and he's been a big collaborator with Kendrick Lamar uh, throughout his career on multiple projects. Terrace Martin sat down with Tank's R&B Money podcast, and they really asked him about working with Kendrick on To Pimp a Butterfly. And he says a lot of really interesting things. A lot of really interesting things in this conversation. So let's take a look and react to it. R&B money. When you guys get to to Pimp a Butterfly, mm -hmm. that's when to me it felt like okay, they're fully in sync at this point, mm -hmm. and in um, popular rap, mm -hmm. you had never heard that type of musicianship in a long time. Mm -hmm. Or not, I won't say ever, but like a, a Snoop and Death Row had mm -hmm. that right. But in between that, it really wasn't a lot of. You didn't hear no horns on records. You didn't hear no, you know what I'm saying? Like no, you, you did. You just Yeah, not at, definitely at that point in time too. And also they recorded this with tape. You know, they went and did this analog. You know, I think DJ Clue did some analog stuff that year on on the project that he dropped. But even from the the sonics, how it was recorded, the inclusion of the heavy jazz influences, there's a lot of really outside of its time things that Kendrick and team and TDE and Dave Free and everyone did on To Pimp a Butterfly that really made it separate completely, in my opinion, sonically from anything else that was really happening in the mainstream. And truthfully, one of the knocks against this album, even J. Cole said, what did Cole say? The second album put people to sleep and they gassed it. <laughs> Part of what they're talking about is how it wasn't how it was made. It wasn't made for the turn up. It wasn't made for where music was at that point in time. <laughs> uh, so it resonates way better now. Uh, it definitely resonates way better than that bar that J. Cole put on that song that he deleted later. What was the conversation behind, you know, like To Pimp a Butterfly? It's, it's a, uh, you know, when you're really in sync, it's like, I, I don't tour with a lot of people. When I do decide to come outside, it's, it's, it's with Herbie Hancock because I learned so much. Okay, you you are flossing today. Too. He said Herbie Hancock. Yeah. That's that's yeah, the only that's, that's the only side. Yeah, I'm not being yeah, that's the only yeah. side, man. I'm gonna be to Herbie forever because I'm, I'm I'm indebted to him. But uh, what Herbie always says, like, one second applause for Herbie Hancock. And I'm sure both of y'all know this touring. That third week when everything starts taking shape, mm -hmm. everything starts where, where you ain't gotta look behind you. You ain't gotta. It's like even if you make a mistake, your guy is whoa. Right now, like, yeah, everything yeah, is it's yeah. just you're not even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. You you damn near not even going you, you damn near not even going to sound check right now. Absolutely. It's, it's just what? it's flowing. Yeah, but what? Yeah, the yeah. mic is there, the, mm -hmm. the it's it's just there. Uh with with me with the T D guys, top and punch are masters of getting a bunch of borderline insane crazy people in one room mm. that all have loud voices and figure out a way where we all follow a common goal. I've never seen leaders like like Top and Punch in my life. But punch, I'm, I'm top of me. Punch, I'm, I'm close to Punch, you know what I'm saying? Just, I'm, I've never seen leadership done like that. You know, I've never, because we, we was difficult to deal with it. You don't know, you know what I'm saying? One, one second applause for leadership. They will all sit down with Punch. We was... He could tell you some stories like, oh, man, <laughs> oh, shit. But the I'm saying that the conversation, it was never a conversation because we've been in sync for so long. We've been in sync since the mixtapes. Like, I, I mean, like I produced the first record for them to get the deal at Warner Brothers. That's mm -hmm. how long it's the start. It's not a I'm yeah. not coming. It's like we just here. Yeah. You know, that's how God, that's how the creators just, it, they put us together, like, which is crazy to me when you think about the Pimpa Butterfly, because finally, after all these years, I was able to use everything from the relationships to the skill level to the breaking rules. I was finally able to use everything. You know, most of the records I've done, even though it has been great success, you know, I'm, just, you know, I love them. I love them when they, especially when they make money, love them. Um, but it's, you know, some records you're more connected to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the conversation with the Pippa Butterfly wasn't really, so it was, it was a lot of loose conversation. A lot of things was going on in time and, um, you know, it was a lot of, a lot of, that's when the police had really started turning back up on the brothers and the news was getting crazy and hip hop was at a weird little standstill. Everybody was kind of sound the same. And, um, you know, he was heavily influenced at that time by jazz. We was just, I mean, one day I walked in, he was rapping. I was like, man, you, man, you like a jazz musician, man. You rapping like Freddie Hubbard and you got one song, you sound like Woody Shaw. 
And you got one song, you sound like classic Clark Terry. Then you got one where you sound like you playing Don Cherry, Free. You just made all these rhythms. Because one day I got... Yeah, I mean, Kendrick and, and Andre give me that feeling too. You know, where they're just so fluid, so fluid with finding different grooves or finding different ways to approach a track and can keep up with so much. You know what I mean? Like those guys really got their reps in in terms of dynamic delivery. I got high as fuck and I transcribed the Kendrick solo. I just wrote it out. And I, I stood in next to a couple of my favorite uh, Coltrane solos that I've transcribed in my earlier days of transcribing. And I was like, oh, this is deep. That has to be ancestral recall. This kid don't even, this, he don't know no Coltrane records. Ancestral recall. I love that. One second applause for ancestral recall. That that's that has to be ancestral recall. Mm. That has to be. That's weird. Mm -hmm. And as we start going there, and he start, you know, I never will forget what one of this story will say everything. The horn up until that record was like it was starting to make you know, I, but the horn was always I never bought the horn in the record sessions because in L.A. record culture, you come with the, if I'm a record producer producing an artist. Uh, R&B artists, they ain't going to fucking saxophone at this time. Mm -hmm. They ain't going to know. If I'm alto, they sing an alto. Why the fuck they want me? They don't. You know, no, they don't want that. And the horn is, it was deemed as too musical. Too this. It was too this, too mm -hmm. that, too that. So I remember when Soundwave and Kendrick, we was in the studio and they bought up the record. Uh, we going to be all right. And I remember hearing that record like, he's like, I want you to play on this record. I'm like, the fuck you want me to do on this, bro? Like, you know, because even, even I'm so free, but even up until this point, I'm, kind of a separate thing. I'm kind of like my production is this guy. Yeah. Because that's a different set of jokes. That's a different restaurant you're going to. Mm -hmm. That's a different perfume you're wearing. That's a different kind of boss talk in that world. I've always kept those worlds separate until to, to Pippa Butterfly. Um, my, I've kept my friends separate because I got some wild motherfucking friends. And then uh, they said, man, no, nah, just play, you know. And I started playing on it. And I was playing what I assumed that people want to hear a saxophone player off rap. And, you know what I'm saying? And <laughs> Dying Wave said, man, look, man, play that shit that we, you play. Like, this the chance. This a Pharrell beat. We just... And even then, I was like, man, Pharrell don't like people playing all this shit. Look at how skeptical he was going into this. I mean, this gives you an idea of what the musical environment was like in 2015. You know, like, definitely, I think, if that's not the, I believe that's the year that, what, so Trayvon happened, I believe, in 2014. Right, maybe the end of 13, 14. That's Trayvon Martin. 15, 16, uh, Mike Brown, you know, like that's in the background. Nobody's using real instruments. Very few people are recording analog. And then Dave Free and Soundwave go to Terrace Martin <laughs> and they're asking to play, play the, the horn on, all right, a Pharrell beat. And look how skeptical he is. This is really interesting insight on this on, on what what it was like around that project. Listen to what he says next. She, I, I know for real, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, I said, man, maybe I should ask him in my head. Should I ask for real first? And yeah. they was like, man, we doing it. Tonight. Should I ask for real first? <laughs> this record, man. Play on this record and think about how many people we're gonna help. Think about what Hold on, we gotta run that back. Like, man, we doing this record, man. Play on this record. I don't like people playing all this shit, because I, I know for real, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know. I said, man, maybe I should ask him in my head. Should I ask for real first? And yeah. They was like, should I ask for real first? <laughs> like, man, we doing this record, man. Play on this record. And think about how many people we going to help. Think about what's going on. Think about what we're saying. Think about what's going on in our life. Like, this ain't a record. This this, a, this, 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 this is where we at. This is where we at. This if we is where we at. We, gonna, we could get them. We could. I felt like, you know, the concept was we, you got to get the message across. However, you got to get the message across. Yeah. You know? That's crazy. I mean, I really, really appreciate Terrace for breaking that down. I mean, think about that. Terrace is skeptical about playing over Pharrell's record. And then Kendrick and Dave and Sowell, they came to him and said, man, play on this record and think about all the people we're going to help. Think about all the people we're going to help. Conversations in music, you know, and I, and you know, a lot of it's on fanagers too, but we spend a lot of time worried about chart position we spend a lot of time talking about playlisting marketing streams all the quantifiable nature easily quantifiable nature of the impact of a sonic composition or a visual composition or a digital file 
How far does it go? How many people interacted with it? I don't hear a lot of people describe songs that they've made or worked on as like this is being described. Terrace Martin was skeptical for all very contemporary reasons. I'd, it sounds like to me, yeah, this is what people are listening to right now. Yeah, I mean, you know, Pharrell doesn't really like it when other people play on top of his stuff. And their answer was, play on this record and think about all the people it's going to help. I love that. I love that story. I love this story so much, and I think it really gives a good insight into at least this point in time what they wanted to accomplish with this record and probably with the album too. Their mission was separate from what conventional wisdom would tell anybody who just had a crazy breakout smash debut. And you want to follow it up with an album that goes completely away from what's happening in the industry and in the space around you. I don't think a lot of teams would choose to take that risk. I don't think a lot of teams tell people, just play on the record and think about how many people are gonna help. That is a story that is, I wish I heard more often. And I am so glad that that's how they approached it because All Right and To Pimp a Butterfly are not only classics, but very meaningful, meaningful releases. I like this nugget of information. I like this brand new Mind Grape. One second applause for Mind Grape. Let me know what you guys think about in the comment section. My name is Justin Hunt. Like, subscribe to the channel. Follow the company man on everything. It's all happening. Justin Hunt is here. It's all happening. Justin Hunt is here. It's all happening. The mathematical breakdown of this mighty game of rap we in. It's boom thapping. Systematical culture views us radical. It's all happening. Shaking hands and dapping it. Life through the lens of hip hop from trip hop to yes, yes, dog. You don't stop. You don't, you don't stop. stop. Justin Hunt is here. It's all happening. It's all happening. Yes, it's all happening. Justin Hunt is here, it's all happening, it's all happening, yes, it's all happening.